Have you put solar panels on the roof of your camper van? Or are you planning to do that? Have you read all the specifications that tell you how much amazing power they're going to deliver you to keep your batteries charged? What if you knew that the reality was that you're more likely to get probably 75% of the power that they claim from your panels? What would you do if you knew that? Would you go out and buy some more? Spend even more money? Would you have space on the roof of your van to put them all? Or what if there was another way to get even more power out of your solar panels? Stay tuned and I'll let you into a little secret. The problem we have with solar panels when we live up here in the frozen north of our planet, have a look at this globe here. So here is Britain and the rest of Europe, right up here on the north of, of this planet. Here's our little van. So if we park that van on Britain, look at the angle it's at, so far up here on the planet. This is the sun. You have to take my word for it, it really is the sun. It's not to scale. If it was to scale with the Earth in this size, that sun would be about 22 miles away and it would also be 300 metres in diameter. So you just keep on using your imagination and we'll, we'll get through this. So up here at 55 degrees north, we're even further north than Glacier National Park, which is in the United States down here. And they have glaciers there. It's further north than the whole of China. And it's actually about level with Alaska, with the southern end of Alaska over here. So the only reason we stay as warm as we do up here in Europe and the UK is because of the warm water currents that come across the Atlantic from the Caribbean down there. Did you ever wonder why globes are presented with this angle, this tilt? It's not so that you can see Britain more closely. Some globes are presented in a flat orientation. That can be quite Let dangerous. Within 24 hours. So, our planet is tilted at 23 degrees when you see it on these globes, because that is actually the angle that the Earth really spins at in relation to the Sun. As I said, here's the sun over here, and you'll see the light comes perpendicular into the, our planet, and we are tilted over from that at 23 degrees. Now the planet takes a year to orbit around the sun. When it's in this location, you see it's tilted away from the sun, and that means it's the northern hemisphere's winter. When it's around the other side of the sun, this side is facing the sun, tilted over, and that's our summertime, so that's six months away. So in the middle of the summer, 21st of June, this tilt is right over to the sun. So the sun's over here, pointing at this side of the, of the Earth. In the winter time, the sun's over here, pointing at this side of the Earth, and at that time it's the southern hemisphere's summer. Now you see the, the equator is the line that runs around the middle of the Earth. There are also lines called the Tropic of Cancer, which runs around about here, and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is around here. And those represent the extremities of when the Earth's tilted in one direction or the other, whether it's wintertime or summertime for the northern or southern hemisphere. Those lines, the tropics, are the points where they're directly below the sun. So the sun will be just for that one day of the year, at the 21st of December, in the middle of our winter, the Tropic of Capricorn will be facing perfectly towards the sun, so 90 degrees from the surface of the Earth. In our summertime, the Tropic of Cancer is in that same position, pointing 90 degrees directly up to the sun. So the sun is beating down at 90 degrees directly onto the face of the Earth. And so throughout the whole year, as we move around the sun, this region, called the tropics, is the area where, for some time of the year, you will find that the sun is directly above. So for those of you that live in the tropics, your solar panels are going to be performing perfectly adequately, right up to their specification, getting the most sun that they possibly can. And I can't help you any more with that, so thanks for watching up to now, and I'll see you in the next video. For the rest of us that live outside the tropics, Stay tuned and I'll try and help you get more efficiency from your solar panels. So if you're parked in your van up here somewhere in Europe, in the UK, this is the angle that your van is going to be parked at. And if your solar panels are flat on the roof of your van, then the light from the sun is going to be coming in 
and hitting the panels and a lot of it is going to be bouncing off straight back into space. It's exactly the same as the heat from the sun, the energy that bounces off the atmosphere back into space and causes the poles to be colder than the tropical regions where here the sun's coming directly in and much less of it bounces off and it can reach the surface of the earth, warm us up and put power into your solar panels. So the secret to maximizing the efficiency of your solar panels is to have them tilted so that they're as perpendicular to the sun's direction as you possibly can. It's not actually a secret. Um, you, I'm sure you will have seen fields full of solar panels and they're all tilted up at some angle towards the sun, all tilting south so they get the most benefit they possibly can from the sun. You'll also see a lot of solar installations on roofs of buildings. A pitched roof provides the perfect angle to keep your solar panels on. So what that angle actually is varies throughout the year. So what we're talking about here is averages. Um, in the middle of the summer, so the 21st of June, if you're in the UK, 55 degrees north of the equator, taking into account the tilt, the 23 degree tilt as well, the sun will reach about 60 degrees above the horizon at midday on the 21st of June. And on that moment, if you tilt your solar panels to 30 degrees from horizontal, they'll be facing directly at the sun and you'll get the best efficiency. However, in the middle of the winter, the sun only reaches about 15 degrees above the horizon. And on that day, midday on the 21st of December, to get any benefit from your solar panels, you're really going to need to tilt the, your panels up to 75 degrees from vertical so that you're facing the sun. So as we said, a nice pitched roof on your house is ideal for mounting solar panels. The snag is we don't have a pitched roof on our van. I'd just like to take a few moments of your time for a word from our sponsors. We still haven't got any sponsors. What? All right, see you later. Okay, back to the video then. Right, on our van, we decided that we would want to be parking with our side door, the sliding door, the kitchen, and the awning when we've got that out outside facing the sunshine to make the most of uh, the decent weather. So that means that we'll park with the passenger side, the left hand side on a right hand drive van facing the sun or facing south. So that's the direction that we want to tilt our solar panels. So I made the tilting mechanism for the panels tilt towards the left of the van. So as long as we park facing due west, then we know that we'll be facing in the best the most optimum location for solar power. Obviously that can be difficult to achieve on a lot of park up sites, but we do our best. So I made the tilting mechanism, the mounting for the solar panels out of aluminium. I made all of the external parts of the van, the roof rack, the side steps, the ladder to access the roof. I made all of those myself from aluminium. Um, I chose to do that partly because it's way cheaper than buying those sort of components, but mainly because I wanted them to be bespoke so that they were exactly what we wanted to suit our needs. The frame for the panels is 25mm welded aluminium angle with a stronger strut that goes across the middle which takes the, the main weight of the panels and also the linear actuators fastened to those so that they provide the power to lift the panels and also to hold them down when they're on the roof of the van. I use stainless steel rose joints to make hinges because they're really smooth, they're very easy to adjust and they give a really nice action. I made the frame for the solar panels first so that would be the dimensions that I knew the roof rack would have to accommodate. So with that coming first, I then made the roof rack to fit everything else. This way the panels don't extend above the top of the roof rack. They sit nicely flush at below that. They're also high enough off the roof of the van to allow space for the junction box, which takes all of the electrical systems from the roof down into the van. And also it enables enough angle for the linear actuators so that they can actually start operating to push the panels up. The actuators work from a 12 volt supply, um, simple setup, all you do is reverse the polarity for moving them in the opposite direction. That's achieved using a remote control device that I got from a popular online retailer. As linear actuators have the same power pushing out as they do coming back in again, they actually pull the panels down flat onto the roof very securely so that they're safe when we're driving. Well, to demonstrate the effectiveness of increasing the efficiency of our panels by tilting them, back in March this year, I took the van out, parked it up in the sunshine, and this was at a time that was during the equinox at the, towards the end of March, which meant that it was, the sun was exactly halfway between midwinter and midsummer. So at this point, the sun reached about 38 degrees above the horizon. And you'll see here added efficiency on the panels. Okay, they're flat down on the roof now. 
and you can see that we're getting about 180 watts of power delivering 12 amps charging current to the batteries and that's in absolute full sun with the panels flat on the roof if I raise them up again there is a cloud approaching so that's going to affect it slightly see the power climbing already So from here you can see the panels and we've got two hundred and ninety five watts of charging power. Now they're three hundred and fifty watt panels, so there's always going to be a little bit of a, an efficiency reduction, but we're getting twenty amps charging into the batteries with two hundred and ninety three watts of solar power. When tilted, I was able to get almost 300 watts out of them, which was delivering 20 amps of charge into the batteries. Now that's a 35% increase in efficiency from the panels. So I hope you can see that making the panels tilt really does give you a lot more efficiency from your panels and makes it well worthwhile. If you wanted to add uh, that extra 100 watts of power simply by adding more panels, you couldn't just add another 100 watt panel because if it's going to be flat it's not got the efficiency that a tilted panel has so you'd actually have to add about 150 watts of panels in order to get 100 watts more charge into your battery that's almost half as much again of the uh, the solar panels that we would need on our van and we don't have any more space on the roof of our van to put any more panels so we've gained that extra efficiency and allows us to get the most out of that investment in those solar panels now clearly there is a one small snag, which is that you can't drive around with those panels raised. Um, it wouldn't be efficient unless you were driving on a dead straight road that was facing due west and there was nothing overhead so you could drive with them up. But actually if you use a battery to battery charger, you're using the alternator to charge from your van. In this van with the charging setup we've got, we actually get 60 amps of charge when the engine's running. So that's three times as much as even the most efficient setup with these panels. So you don't get any solar charge while you're driving anyway. So we just park up facing west, tilt the panels, and when we're parked we get that little bit of top up into our batteries. Now to make absolutely certain that I don't drive off accidentally with the panels raised, I've got the remote control for the raising the panels here and that's attached to this panel that I hook on with these hooks to the top of the steering wheel and then so that's there so I know whenever I raise the panels I'll put that on the steering wheel and that closes at least one of the holes in that slice of Swiss cheese. Well I do hope you get something from this video and that you can put uh, some sort of tilting mechanism on your solar panels to get the most out of them and uh, get the benefit from all that money you spent. If you've got any questions or comments you'd like to make, please do get in touch through the comments. We do read them all. Thanks for watching. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. If you want to see more of our van build videos, you'll see them just down there. And then if you want to see some of our adventures, they're down there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.